Good morning, everyone. I am Jalita Helms, and it is a blessing and a privilege to be your moderator this marvelous Monday morning. Let us bow our heads for prayer as our dear sister Barbara Wilson offers the opening prayer. Good morning, everyone. Let us bow. Father, in Jesus' name, we are so thankful that you have woken us up yet another morning to praise your holy name, to give glory to you, to thank you for all that you've done for us. 
We know that if it was not for you, we couldn't be here. So we say thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and your grace for yet another day to serve you. Lord, we ask now that you come into our hearts, prepare our hearts, send your Holy Spirit to fill us. Please, I ask that your will be done throughout the course of this meeting, that your words are put into the mouths of those who participate and that our hearts are prepared to receive it. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Cleanse our hearts. Renew a right spirit within us and may your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Welcome, welcome. And on behalf of our prayer and praise service, the Long Island Seventh-day Adventist Churches welcome you who are on Zoom and YouTube prayer service, and which include a team of Pastor Dorset and his wife, Sister Jessica, Elder Warren Rogers and his wife, Sister Carla Rogers, Sister Linda Gibson, Sister Marie Martin, Sister Maxine McDonald, and Brother Dwayne Daly. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13, and Proverbs 17, verse 22. Coming to read our scripture lesson is our dear elder, David Knowles. A merry heart make it a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. A merry heart do it good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dry the bones. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. We would go right into introducing our speaker. Our presenter for this morning is no stranger to us on this 6 a.m. Long Island prayer and praise service. She is a child of God, someone who loves the Lord and is always willing to be led by him. She is a Christian and an active member of the Hillview Church. Please pray for her as she comes. However, before she comes, we will be blessed by a song entitled, Rejoice, the Lord is King. After the song has been sung, we will hear the voice of our dear sister, Linda Gibson. Submit, 
and bow to his command and fall beneath his feet. With all your heart, with all your voice, rejoice again, I say Thank you very much, uh, Sister Jalitha Humes, Sister Barbara Wilson. Thank you all very much. I thank you for those who are here on YouTube and Zoom, and I give God praise and thanks for all that he does for us. Let us pray. Our kind Father in heaven, we just give you thanks and praise for your message this morning. We thank you for this reading that comes from the Adventist home and the word. We thank you for Elder David Knowles, for his reading of the scriptures. And Father, as the reading is done, Lord, may it strike our hearts, help us to be more like you and less of ourselves. So as we go through, we ask that you'll be with those who join us, going to join us, and Lord, help us to take it, take it throughout, take, take us throughout the day and throughout the rest of this week with our minds stayed on being cheerful persons. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Good morning again, brothers and sisters. This morning we are looking at cheerfulness. You know, cheerfulness is a quality of brightness and optimism, a state that other people can usually sense from your happy whistle or the smile on your face. You could also use the word like cheer or happiness to describe this sunny quality. And I'm going to share with you some quotes right now on cheerfulness. Uh, there are quotes that come from the Bible, but are paraphrased. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. A cheerful heart and a cheerful mind are powerful tools. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. And as the scripture said, you know, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So now we enter our reading, cheerfulness. True Christians will be cheerful. Or I should say the true Christian will strive to be cheerful. Do not allow the perplexities and worries of everyday life to fret your mind and cloud your brow. You know, those perplexities are things we can't do anything about that we often tend to worry about. But we should not let them cloud our brow. Because if you do, you will always have something to be sorrowful about, to be vexed about, to be annoyed about. Life is what we make it, and we shall find what we look for. If we look for sadness and sorrow, if we are in a frame of mind to magnify little difficulties, we shall find plenty of them to engross our minds, our thoughts, and our conversations. But if we look on the bright side of things, we shall find enough to make us cheerful and happy. If we give smiles, they will be returned to us. If we speak pleasant, cheerful words, they will be spoken to us again. When Christians appear as gloomy and depressed as though they thought themselves friendless, 
they give a wrong impression of religion. In some cases, the idea has been entertained that cheerfulness is inconsistent with the dignity of the Christian character. But this is a mistake. Heaven is all joy. And if we gather to our souls the joys of heaven, and as far as possible, express them in our words and deportment, we shall be more pleasing to our heavenly father than if we were gloomy and sad. It is the duty of everyone to cultivate cheerfulness instead of brooding over sorrow and troubles. Many not only make themselves wretched in this way, but they sacrifice their health and their happiness to a morbid imagination. There are things in their surroundings that are not agreeable, and their countenance wear a continual frown that more plainly than words express discontent. These depressing emotions are a great injury to them health-wise, for by hindering the process of digestion, they interfere with nutrition, while grief and anxiety cannot remedy a single evil. They can do great harm, but cheerfulness and hope while they brighten the pathway of others, are life unto these that find that those that find them and help to all their flesh. Now, there are many people who try to follow God's way and they try to hold on to Christ and uh, have, them, have him lead them and guide them. We have many persons um, of faith throughout the history of the world who exhibited this uh, cheerful spirit. And it is stated that Sister Ellen Harmon White appeared to many to be a cheerful person. And she... You can ask, did you ever see her gloomy, despondent, or complaining? And her answer was, I have a faith which forbids this. So our faith, we must be resolved that the Lord himself helps us to be cheerful and filled with joy and have a spirit of peace and contentment. It is a misconception of the true ideal of Christian character and Christian service that leads to these conclusions. It is the way, it is the want of genuine religion that produces gloom, despondency, and sadness. Earnest Christians seek to imitate Jesus, for to be Christians is to be Christ-like. It will be really essential to have correct conceptions of Christ's life, Christ's habits, that his principles may be reproduced in us who would be Christ-like. A half-service, loving the world, loving self, loving frivolous amusements, makes a timid, cowardly servant. He follows Christ a great way off. A hearty, willing service to Jesus produces a sunny religion. Praise God. Those who follow Christ the most closely have not been gloomy. In Christ is light and peace and joy forevermore. We need more Christ and less worldliness. More Christ and less selfishness. So we have a command. Let us then walk as children of light. It is not the will of God that we should be gloomy or impatient, nor that we should be light and trifling. It is Satan's studied meth plan to push persons from one extreme to the other. As children of the light, God would have us cultivate a cheerful and happy spirit that we may show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so we can use our cheerfulness 
to win the affections of others, and especially our children. Smile, parents. Smile, teachers. If your heart is sad, let not your face reveal the fact. Let the sunshine from a loving, grateful heart light up the countenance. Unbend from your iron dignity. Adapt yourselves to the children's needs and make them love you. You must win their affections if you would impress religious truth upon their heart. And so we are admonished to keep a pleasant countenance and a melodious voice. Parents, be cheerful, not common and cheap, but be thankful and obedient and submissive to your heavenly father. You are not at liberty to act out your feelings if things should arise that irritate. And I have to remember that also. We all have to remember that. Let us try not to become irritated over the smallest thing that can change our spirits and our countenance. Winning love is to be like deep waters ever flowing forth in the management of your children. They are the lambs of the flock of God. Bring your little ones to Christ. If parents would educate their children to be pleasant, they should never speak in a scolding manner to them. Educate yourselves to carry a pleasant countenance and bring all the sweetness and melody possible into your voice. The angels of God are ever near your little ones and your harsh, loud tones and fretfulness and not pleasant to their ears. The mother should cultivate a cheerful, contented, happy disposition. Every effort in this direction will abundantly be repaid in both the physical well-being and the moral character of her children. A cheerful spirit will promote the happiness of her family and in a very great degree, improve her own health. So I repeat that again. A cheerful spirit will promote the happiness of the family and in a very great degree, improve the health of the mother. And I dare say the health of all. So lift the shadows of and lighten the task. Look upon matters in a cheerful light, seeking to lift the shadows that, if cherished, will envelop the soul. Cultivate sympathy for others. Let cheerfulness, kindness, and love pervade the home. This will increase a love for religious exercises and duties, large and small, will be performed with a light heart. We are also finally admonished that we may have true Christian dignity and at the same time be cheerful and unpleasant in our deportment. Cheerfulness without levity that is, the treatment of serious matters with with humor or lack of due respect, is one of the Christian graces. So let us remember to demonstrate and exhibit a spirit of cheerfulness. It will be returned to us in the little acts that we do, smiling at someone or smiling with somebody. It is often returned. Our tone of voice, our manner of speaking with pleasantness will be returned and demonstrated in like manner to others. And so we ask that God will help us to be more cheerful and more contented and peaceful even amid adversities and the most challenging trials that we face 
throughout our lives. So let us pray. Our kind Father in heaven, we thank you for this reading this morning that comes to awaken our spirits to what cheerfulness can do for us. Lord, help us to always remember that we can be cheerful to others under the most trying and taxing of situations. Help us, Lord, to be more like you and less of ourselves. And so, Father, we yield our will to yours. We ask, Lord, to for, that you forgive us where we have failed you in the past in this one area and help us to demonstrate that more and more. Help your Holy Spirit to help us to be more cheerful, more guided and exuding of your spirit. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name for this lesson and for your scripture reading this morning on being cheerful and keeping that in our spirits. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Sister Linda, for the reading of Ellen G. White's writing on cheerfulness. We realize that a true Christian will always be cheerful and will not allow any worries of everyday life to clog their mind. Yes, it is our duty to cultivate cheerfulness instead of brooding over sorrow and trouble. I love the part where it says that teachers and parents should smile to win the affection of our children. May God bless you, Linda, with your ministry. May he protect you and guide you. And may you continue to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pastor Dorset will now pray for our participant and their request. And Elder Avo McDonald will offer the prayer of thanksgiving. While Pastor Dorset is praying, I want all of you on YouTube and Zoom to also say a silent prayer with your mic muted. Thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, in the morning, thou shalt hear our voice ascending high. To thee will we direct our prayers, to thee lift up our eyes. Father, what another privilege. One more day, 24 hours that you have blessed us with. A day that can be filled with opportunities to learn more of you, to be a blessing to others, and to be your hands and feet. We come to you this morning grateful for this awesome privilege. And we ask that as we start this day, that you will please pardon us of all of our sins. Father in faith, in the precious blood of the Lamb of God, we place our hands, figuratively speaking, on his forehead, making confession of our sins and asking that you will take them away from us for we long to be perfectly whole and may christ come and dwell in our soul lord we thank you for the reading this morning we thank you for reminding us that it is important to you that we those who have decided to follow you through the watery grace of baptism that we demonstrate your character of cheerfulness and joy to those around us. We know that we can find energy to do this at the cross of Christ. And so we pray that because of our faith in you, this would flow out of our hearts. Father, we have loved ones, friends and family members whom we want to bring before you at this time. As I go through the participants' lists on Zoom and YouTube and the requests, we are praying not only that you will please remember the individual names that are called, 
but remember all other members of the household they represent, whether that be their spouses, children, any other loved ones, relatives that come under their roof. Please, Father, as we begin this day, we pray that you will instill within us a faith that will trust you and help us to seek first your kingdom and its righteousness so that all of our temporal needs can be added unto us. Please visit, bless, and supply all of the needs according to your riches and glory of my dear wife, Jessica, and Charity. We pray for our siblings, relatives, parents, Mr. Michael, Ms. Veronica, Doran, Shauna, Care, Kaylee, Tia, Omar, and Nathaniel. Please also remember Grandma Iva, Aunt Cynthia, my parents, Sydney and Barbara Dorset, Ellsworth, Ganthe, Mariah, Aki, Nathan, and Gabrielle. Lord, we also bring before you the families of Sister Arna Del Wiley, Eric and Corletta Rule, Sharon Miller, Esme Seymour, Yvonne Adderley, Maxine Rollins, Viola Albrey, Abby Jack, Melbourne Rule, Pastor Mark and Sister Tuisha Ewan, Dr. Mona Lisa Vilma, Joy Khan, Janet Carey, Elder Marcus Bain, Sister Vern and Ashford, Angela Ferguson, Terry Carlene Peart, Jackie Skippings, Antonia Okiki, Dr. Joseph and Sister Ethel Evans, Virginia Jarrett, Gloria Blake, Peggy Seymour, Portia Barnett, Tamika Finley, Patsy Delati Budea Coburn, Irma Mitchell, Joan Delancey, Barbara Dwyer, Sister Norma Bell, Sister Marie Martin, Miss Elaine, and Omar, Nicola Powell, Theresa Roll, Valderine Ramming, Barbara Tannis, Joranda Curtis, Abby and Michelle Newman, Alicia Ramming, Elder Christopher Stewart, Elder Stafford and Brister, Sister Kalila and Kasana. Eulalie Farron, Bernadette Hunter, Elder Audley Mitchell and Sister Monique. Angela Ferguson. Father, we present also the families of Elder David Knowles, Sister Barbara Wilson, Elder Orville McDonald, Sister Maxine, Jerome, Brother Godfrey and Sister Jalitha Humes, Sister Linda and Jonathan, Brother Arnold Clark, Elaine and Patricia Crichton, Alicia, Anastasia Bridgewater, Brother Andrew Hart, Betty Tinker, Betty Williams, Elder Warren Rogers, Sister Carla, Karen and Carol. Charles and Carmeta Ramming, Charlotte Culmer, Cheryl Bodie, Christine Galanas, Clarence and Charlotte Bryce, Sister Enola Daly and Sister Cynthia Lightburn, Darnell Johnson, Derek, Sally and Derica, Diana Miller, Dr. Ruby, Edith Roach, Elder John Carter, Ella May and Macario Blyden, Elmore Jacques, Elsie, Shanti, Frank Patrick, and Frankie Richardson. Elder Winston and Sister Esteline Ash. Benabees, Francita, Tashika, Tashina, Devon Stewart. Freeman Kelly, Enid Rule, Greta Kemp, Gwen Gibson, Harriet, Hartman, and Stacy Strawn. Pastor Jeremiah Duncombe, Sister Joan, the family and the team in the Holy Land replica at the Holy Land Replica, Sister Ingrid Moore, and Sister Elva Ritchie. Sophia Hughes, Verna Kirby, Ivan and Sharon Roll, Jacqueline, Alexander, Janice Coakley, Tony, Turan, Brandy, Jada, Jaden, Pierre, Joan Delancey, Julie Davis, June Walker, Elder Kevin Robinson and Sister Sharon, La Merci Asante, Sister Johan, 
Lee Strawn, Elder Lester Stewart, and Sister Cindy. Lillian Roll, Linda Maxwell, and Ava Hepburn. Liz, Lorraine and Clyde Miller, Lorraine Clark, Lorraine Joseph, Lorraine Evans, Lyndon and Janet Roll. Made on Ramming, Michael Thompson, Maureen Cooper. Uncle Jerry, Aunt Macklin, GJ, Sarai, Jeremiah, Marsha Walker, Mariette Ferguson, Elder Marvis David, Melanie Jones, Jason and Arthur Neek, Melvin's family, Mo McClymont, Naomi Douglas, Peter Brown, Natalie Marklin, Oakley Thomas, Olive Thomas, Olive Miller, Olive Sterling Johnson, Onise Valord, Opal Morant, Patricia Brown, Patricia Roberts, Elder Patrick Wilson and Sister Leone, Brianna Gibbs, Rebecca Johnson, Rose Ferguson, Ariana, Sasha, Tristan, Victoria, Rose DeVoe, Roy and Jacqueline Brown, Ruth Walks, Sandra McPherson, Sharon Brown, Sharon Singh Bryce, Elder Sydney and Sister Pearl Sylvester, Sister Blumfield Clark, her three children and grandchildren, Lubin, Calvin, Calvina, Calvante, Sylvia Curtis, Aaron, Nikisha, Margaret, Tamika Marshall Coley, Teresa, Teresa Martin, Victorine Wallace, Ronald, Kevon, and Ricky, Brother Henry and Sister Naomi Monker, Karen, Keyshawn, Kiran, and also Rita Bennett. The Father of any others, join afterward. We pray, Lord, that you will also supply their needs and the needs of their families as well. And if there was anyone who logged in while going through the list and I didn't see them, Lord, I pray that you will please remember them as well. We come to you now asking that you would hear and answer these requests. We remember the example that Jesus left for us in Gethsemane, where he was careful to ask that not your will, but his will be done. So please answer these requests, not according to our will, but according to your will and help us to live lives where all of our prayers will not be driven by selfish motives or our own personal benefit, but for your glory, Lord. We praise you with Abby Jack for your watch care and protection. We give you praise along with Sister Joy for a new day of life. We're asking that you will please answer the, the unspoken requests of Sister Tawisha Ewan. And we praise you along with Sister Portia Barnett, Lord. We are praying that you will please answer the requests of Valderine Ramming. She is praying that you will grant her self-control to control her speech when things are not going right. We are praying for Bernadette Hunter, family, neighbors, church family worldwide. We pray that you will strengthen Eulalie Farron. We pray for the mother of Sister Monique Mitchell who is hospitalized. Please remember her and take care of her. And we are praying that according to your will, you would restore her to good health. We pray for Theresa Roll and the family. Help them to keep their eyes on you, walking in your ways, always. And we pray that her children would surrender their lives to you. Supply the needs of her church family. And please also remember her siblings. We lift up Angela Ferguson. Please answer those four requests and grant that healing that she is praying for according to your will. We lift up Viola Albury, her sons, Wade and Vincent. May they be saved. Father, we also want to pray for the requests of those individuals here with us on Zoom. We bring before you the requests of Sister Lee Strong. 
please keep her and her family covered by the righteousness of Christ and his redeeming blood. Restore spiritually and physically by the power of your indwelling spirit. Dawn Altheus, Misty Cantrell Alvern, the sick and grieving members of our churches and communities. May we be living testimonies unto you, reflecting your character, and may we be sealed until you come or call. Please answer Andrew Hart's request for the leaders of our conference, our local churches, for the political leaders of nations around the world. We pray that you will help them to make decisions that will allow your gospel to go forth. We continue to pray for the continuation of religious liberty and that we, through our voice and pen, will do all that we can uh, to keep religious liberty strong and active in our nations, Lord. We are praying for our pastors, elders, youth, niece, the nieces and nephews of Brother Andrew. We pray for Opal, Glennis, Dawn, Cheryl, Avery, Robin, Anne, Glenda, Carrie, Kadeen. His request for marriages, financial needs, and those battling illnesses. Uh, we want to lift up Rose Ferguson and her request. She's asking that you allow Ariana to return home safely. Help her family to serve you and to spread your word to others. We pray for Sister Rose DeVoe. Strengthen her and her family, not only physically, but also spiritually. Please remember Anita Hudson and her family, her friend Grace, Miss Johnson, Cedric, Juwet. Juliet, Kiana, Omarion, Kincaid, Michael, McKeel, Miss Pauline, Patricia, Jill, the unspoken request for a closer relationship with you, her finances, the works of her hands. May your spirit work with her today and every day. Help her to learn more and more about you. And we pray also for the family members of those names whom she has brought before you as well. Please grant salvation, deliverance from demonic attacks, strongholds, curses, and possession. Protection, your fear, the infilling of your spirit and a loving heart. For Elaine, Patricia, Victorine, Chlorine, Stacy, Hartman, Jacqueline, Alexander, Patricia Brown, Chavez, Hartman Jr., Kwame, Kojo, Samantha, Akeem, Lisa, Waylon, Shauna, Lawrence, Maudlin, Lucille, Natalie, Leondra, Brandy, Alicia, Ricardo, Anya, and Spencer. Donil, Enid, Maureen, Monker, Marie, Ronnelly, Cheyenne, Maurice, Ronald Sr., Bruce, Bonnie, Stephen, Simon, Hilleman, Trevor, Sandra, Miller, Comer, Claudette, Lily, Tia, Vanessa, Claudius, Please save and seal all of them, their families, children, and siblings. We pray for Teresa, Tanette, Sherwin, Candace, Ella, Unique, Angel, Shamar, the friends and grandchildren, for eternity according to your holy will and sovereign power through Christ. Please also answer those unspoken requests according to your will. We pray for Ms. Joanne, thanking you for your grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and your word for the Holy Spirit. You lift up the children of the group 22 at fraternity school. We pray for the families, households, and relatives to have a closer walk with you. We're praying for young people to be reconciled with you and their parents. We pray that they will turn back to you that you grant them forgiveness, repentance, salvation, healing, guidance, conviction of sins, divine protection, and awareness of your love for them, your voice and your presence. We pray that you continue to supply the needs of Pastor St. Floor, bless the ministry over there in Haiti, him and his family, and we pray for our neighbors to come to know you. 
We lift up Sister Barbara Wilson. Please remember Dino. We pray for his complete healing, vision, and salvation for his family and for Peter, who enters a mediation case next month. We're praying for Sister Linda and Jonathan, the entire family, repentance, salvation, direction, guidance, and traveling mercies. Please answer the requests of Sister Theresa Martin, all of those individuals on her prayer list. Please remember the family, friends, and co-workers of Sister Alicia. We pray for a cousin battling cancer, for the Brown family as they have lost Brandon. Comfort them, we pray. We pray that we will all be drawn closer to you before it is too late, that you will grant assistance and success to the work programs and provide finances so that needs can be met. We pray for a return of the hearts to you, those who have strayed away. Please hear and answer her brother's requests and also her unspoken requests. Please remember Maureen Cooper and the family as they travel to lay her father to rest, Lord. We pray for comfort. We pray that you will allow those who don't know you to realize their need of you. Remember Tehran and the family and we lift up the thanksgiving of Janice Coakley. We pray that you will grant those individuals health of mind and body and lead them, guide them, direct, protect, and save them. Remember Dorothy May as she recovers from surgery. We pray for our Roker who has surgery today. May it be successful. Please also help Omar with the, with the kidney problems and help these individuals to surrender to you who are able to heal them. We lift up Sister Edith Roach and the family. Keep them faithful to you. Please be with her siblings and their family. Help them to choose to serve you. We pray that you will heal the sick, including Doy, Noah, Pat, Baal, and Thomas, Daniel, Betty, Ellie, Edith, and please provide the needs of those on the prayer list. We pray for the bereaved families and for two unspoken requests. We want to lift up our role and the family as they navigate a challenge. Please grant a closer walk with you and answer those unspoken requests. We are praying for Sister Justina and the nursing students. Lord, we pray for their salvation. We pray that they will learn to trust you and put you first, that you grant them success. And please answer Sister Justina's unspoken request as well. Lord, we bring before you all of those on Zoom, all of those on YouTube. Please help us where we cannot help ourselves. And again, Help us to remember the lesson from this morning. Help us to have it at the forefront of our minds, looking to Jesus to allow you to help us to be consistently cheerful Christians, knowing that it makes a great difference. We also want to pray for Geranda Curtis. Help Dennis and Natalie, who is sick, and please provide a good job for Tia. Please also supply the needs of Tamara Johnson. Lord, if there be any other requests that will come in after I have ended this prayer, we also ask that you will hear and answer those according to your will. Father, we say thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. Thank you for being a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our loving God and our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your kingdom come, O God, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven with your holy angels. This morning, I want to thank you for the sacrifice that you have made sending your only begotten son into the world to die for us sinners. I want to thank Jesus for being obedient even unto death. 
even the death of the cross. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you for now sitting at the right hand of your Father in heaven, making intercession for us. We know that we are not deserving, but you are faithful to us and your, your love is unbounding. Because of that, we want to receive that salvation that you have for us because we know that you know what is best. So we surrender our life to your will and to your way. I pray that you will mold us and make us to the similitude of your own self. I thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that you have sent into the world to comfort, to teach, and to guide us. We thank you for the ministry of your holy angels who minister to us. You said that your angels are ministering spirit who are sent forth to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. Thank you for the many times that they have protected us from harm and danger. Sudden and untimely death. It is because of your mercy, O oh loving God, that we are still around today. Regardless of what we are going through today, we know that there is hope in Jesus because he sits at the right hand of power and everything that we need is disposed is, is at our uh, our disposal is at our disposal because you are there and you are able to do abundantly above what we can think or dream or imagine. This morning, we also want to thank you for the Long Island uh, team, Pastor Darset and family, Sister Linda, Sister Marie, uh, Sister Jalita, who led, led out today. We thank you for all those who have uh, prayed and support this ministry. Pray that you will help that it will go from strength to strength. I pray and thank you for all the prayers that have been answered because of this ministry and those who have been praying on this platform. I thank you, God, because Every day we wake up, your mercy is on you. Thank you for life. We thank you for food. Thank you for our jobs. We thank you, loving God, that you have he healed us. Most importantly, we thank you that even though we are not deserving, that your salvation is open to us. So those who are on this platform who have not given their life to Jesus, I pray that you'll help them to do so today before it's a day too late. And thank you for all of us who have committed our life to you and are struggling. I ask that you'll continue to strengthen us. Help us not to be the voice of Satan that will lead your people away from you. But help us to be loving. Help us to be encouraging. We thank you for the reading this morning from Sister Linda. And remind us that we need to be cheerful. Not uh, persons who are gloomy and discouraging. I pray, O oh loving Father, that you will continue to bless us and keep us. Most of all, when you come in your kingdom, and none of us on this platform be running to the, the rocks and the mountain and say, fall on us. Or we'll be running to you and hailing you and say, this is our God. We have long been waiting for him. And he has now come to save us. His mercies we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord, with us.
on this prayer and prayer praise meeting this morning. We thank our dear sister Barbara Wilson for our opening prayer. Brother David Knowles for our scripture reading, Sister Linda Gibson for such an inspiring reading on cheerfulness from Sister Ellen's writing. Our dear Pastor Dorset for praying for our participant and the request, and also for waking with our devices in the background. Elder Orville McDonald, we thank you for your prayer for on Thanksgiving. We also thank all of you on YouTube and Zoom for staying with us and listening and praying quietly with us. Now, the closing song will be done by the Beckham sister, God be with you until we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet. for the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. In number 6, 24, 25, and 26. Amen. If there is anyone who celebrate a birthday or wedding or any anniversary, we wish you God's blessing and may he keep you always in his loving care. We also give condolences to all the families who lost loved ones. May each and everyone find comfort as you serve the Lord. In Matthew 5, 4 says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It's now open mic time. 
you have one minute or maybe longer to bring your greeting. Open mic. Amen. Good morning, good morning, everyone. What a blessing it is to stand before our God, his throne, and I will talk with him about everything we need to do and say. That we always speak good words to each other, that we show what love and mercy that can help us to give a, a cheerful thought, a cheerful word kindness and love and mercy. And I just thank uh, Sister Linda for that reading because it really, we need to open our hearts and allow God to work through us. We don't do a good job of that. So I just thank you, Pastor and your family and all those on this platform that we will do our best as Servants of the Lord to know Him and understand His will for our lives. And good morning, good morning to everyone. Have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone. I would just like to thank God for Sister Jolita, Sister Barbara, Sister um, uh, Elder David, and Elder Ovo, and Pastor Dorset. And I'd like to say, you know, I just thank God for all of you, those on YouTube and Zoom. May you continue to be blessed, and I love you all. Have a blessed day. Good morning, everyone. It's a blessing once again to be in the land of the living. And to be able to give praise and thanks to Almighty God for his blessings towards us. YouTube and Zoom. All of our members this morning, I wish you God's richest blessing and a day of happiness as you go. We thank the Long Island District for everything that they have done this morning on this prayer line. Pastor Yon Dorset, Sister Jalita Humes, for a job well done, Sister Jalita. May God continue to bless you. Thankful for the reading from Sister Linda Gibson. It's an eye opener to each of us and maybe heed the things that we have heard this morning and thankful for all the prayers that went up on our behalf. We pray for safe travel return for Sister Marie, who has gone to bury her grandmother yesterday in Bermuda. May God be with her as she returns safely. I sing for you this morning, supper time. Many years ago, in days of childhood, I used to play till evening shadows come. Then winding down an old familiar pathway, I hear my mother call at set of sun. Come home, come home at supper time. The shadows be in fast. Come home. Come home at supper time. We're going home at last.
some of my fondest memories of my childhood was woven around supper time. When my mother called from the back porch of the old homestead, come on home now, dear, it's supper time. Oh, how I wish I could still hear her call. But you know, for me, the greatest time is going to be when the call comes from the portals of glory. Come home, it's supper time. When all of God's children <coughs> are gathered around the table in God's great heaven, then it will be supper time. In vision now I see us standing yonder and her familiar voice I hear once more. The banquet's table up in heaven's ready. It's supper time upon the golden shore. Come home, come home at supper time. The shadows weave in fast. Come home, come home at supper time. Yeah, I'm going home someday. We are going home at last. I love you, everyone. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Okay. We will like to thank Sister Joan Delancey. Yes, Sister Joan. The reading show opened my heart to smile more, especially with our children or when they are wrong. Sister Linda Gibson, thank you for allowing me to moderate this morning. And Sister Munker, I just love that song. Come home, come home, it's supper time. And thank you for praying for Marie as she is in the Cayman Island. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the burial. We all, we all were watching it. So thank you for praying for her. God bless you, Sister Munker. And continue to sing. That's your ministry. Continue to sing for us. I like that song. Come home, come home. It's supper time. Lord, as we depart from the Zoom and YouTube, we ask you to bless us throughout the remaining of the day and guide us safely to all of our activities we face today, allowing your Holy Spirit to protect and keep us safe. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Sister Jolita, for doing an excellent job. Thank God. Amen. I don't know if you heard the voice, the last song, God be with you. If you didn't hear it. God be with you till we meet again. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. Thank you, thank you, Sister Brother Dossett, Pastor Dossett. Amen.